Okay, this is uh, an early attempt at an atom tomato. Okay, triggering mechanism is here. We've just got a 12 volt battery. Got uh, 12 ohms, 12 volts, is 12 volts per pulse. Now at the moment, it's not running by itself. I'm using 1.5 by 10 millimeter neo magnets here. They're quite strong for their size, and they're only 1.5 millimeter thick, but they they pull quite a bit to the core of this, which is actually a solenoid. I got from Dick Smith a long time ago. It's rated at 18 volts, uh, 12 ohms, but of course I've got 12 volts from this little gel cell battery here. In the back here, it, these clamps are holding some very wide post box sticks. Look like that. And they're stacked together and they've got um, neo magnets, which look like this. These are the ones, the same ones that are here. And these ones are just super glued onto some laminated CDs, uh, CD size discs. Anyway, they're actually the spacer discs. And the milkiness in there is the glue affecting the plastic. But anyway, that's the size of the magnet, if you can see that. It's, a, it's pretty small. Not filming. It'll be easy to see if I stick it on a, my Allen key. There you go, you can see it there. That's our Allen key, so it's 10 millimeter diameter and 1.5 millimeter thick. And I'm getting sore fingernails pulling it apart. Sore fingers, actually. Okay. Now the disc I'm using um, is one I made quite some time ago. It's another one. Another disc. The, this is a star configuration. It's a little bit, quite a bit larger than what. Adams uses, Robert Adams used in his disc. The, these contacts here are just out of a, a solenoid which the packet of which looks like that. That's, that's the solenoid with the core of it removed. That's the core inside of solenoid. They're not using it in this at the moment. Okay. Right. Um, the idea of the discs here, I've got a diagram, which kind of gives an idea. That's a. That's probably not the best to show you. But they're st staggered them like this, and they've st they step up closer and closer to the disc here. That's another view of the. That's a plan of the disc. It's an elevation of the disc. They sort of step up here, and it's a further away, closer, 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 closer. You see it? What I've done is I've sandwiched these discs inside of the ice box sticks. Um, and the thickness of the of the ice block stick is is about the same as the magnet, which is about 1.5 millimeters thick. So. Okay, so they're stacked, and so as the disc turns, it gets to here. It's attracted by this magnet, but as it moves, it oh, it wants to be attracted to this one, which is closer, and oh, this one's closer, this one's closer and closer until it gets to the sticky point. Um, which is not shown here, but um, that's kind of where um, I've got a, a sixth mag magnet in here. One, two, it shows five, but I've actually got six. So that 
I just decided that it needed needed the extra column in order to in order to register the the magnet the four mag main magnets on the disc the four magnets on the disc with the core with the core of the solenoid or state which is really I'm using it as a state okay so you can imagine that sitting in this location here with the terminals if you can see them right okay so that's what we've got so it doesn't actually run you get an idea of how it's supposed to run when I spin it freehand you just hear a mild click but this is because it's a solenoid it's designed to move the core is designed to move and I've just got a, uh, a wire tie holding the holding the solenoid core in place so it doesn't actually move but it's a little bit loose so you, you actually hear it click a little bit but when it's powered it clicks a lot louder so that's how I know using sound to know when it's actually engaging so I'll turn it on okay, it's, it's not actually a connection because these contacts aren't quite registered but if I move it you can hear the click it's quite a bit louder but as I say 12 watts Two pulses and enough. Okay, so that's just to show you what doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. I'll get my it just comes to a stop. Alright, we must keep going. Look at that. So 12 watts is a little bit pathetic to put through there. So I might try moving this in a bit closer which gives it a, a longer duty cycle but then the longer you have to make the duty cycle I guess the less efficient that becomes but I could probably do that quickly if I just takes it close on but I have to twist, twist the twist this around oh so spin it a bit not too much it's a little bit pretty stiff just pushing it a little bit too hard on the disc now contacts there. So let's bring it in a little bit closer. Okay, the sound that looks like it's close to working. Might be just a little bit premature, so time plenty of timing retard the timing a little bit. Check it with my light just to see when, the, when it's actually kicking in. Uh, I've got a visual clue.
just watching the magnet when the light comes on. The magnet. Just. It's just coming on as it touches the magnet. So it's until until you can't get rid of them. It's going to turn this to slightly on anti-clockwise in relation to the to the lighter discs. So, yeah, that looks better. Okay. So I'm going to try that again. Unclip that. Stick that in there. This is going to go. That's pretty close. So I've got this in there before, I think. But um, there's a lot more drag probably on the disc. It affects it quite a lot. Having that, having that pressure on there. Also, got to watch the. Okay, that looks that's working better now. But it's only just working. It's a 12 watt motor. No, I didn't expect it to work. Yeah, I just said I'll just keep going in from the battery around the low. It's not, not that no free energy or anything in there, it's just trying to get the thing to run. While it's running, I might stop the film and I'm making that out of shooting. 